The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Agatha Christie and George Simeon present the best in mystery storytelling. Each show will be full of suspense, intrigue, and of course, mystery. Now let's join our featured mystery. Georges Simenon's My Friend Maigret. Dramatized by David Cregan. Starring Nicholas Le Prevot as Chief Inspector Maigret, with Julian Barnes as Georges Simenon, and Neil Dudgeon as Inspector Pike of Scotland Yard. I never wrote that you had methods, Chief Inspector, only that you smoked a pipe. Someone once came to study what he called my methods. It was embarrassing because he did it just as I was told I was responsible for someone's murder. I don't remember that. Well, apparently a, a tramp, an ex-con, claimed I was his friend, his real friend. And for that, one stormy night, he was brutally killed and mutilated. Just listen then. I know, Chief Inspector Magre. I'll tell you this. He's my friend. I have a letter to prove to all of you that Magre is my real close friend. What is it? Uh, what do you want that? Your friend can't help you here. At that very moment, one Inspector Pike of Scotland Yard, a kind of elegant young lizard, had crossed the channel to examine the methods you'd made famous, Monsieur Simenon. Oh, dear. The murder had happened on the Mediterranean island of Porquerolles, in the middle of one of those storms they get down there, a mistral. I had to go, so I had to take Pike with me. You had a chance to know each other, then. In a way... Do you always smoke a pipe, even in a sleeping compartment? It, uh, it helps me think. I wonder, why have you been writing to this tramp? I haven't. Well, the inspector from the air said they'd found a letter from you on the body. That's rather touching. I did write to it, just once, in prison, when I got him sent down 14, oh, 15 years ago. Marcelin, his name was. Marcelin, a Paris pimp. Well... More than a pimp, really. His girlfriend was a whore, and he used to steal the customers' wallets while... Uh... Does that happen in England? I believe so. Well, you probe less deeply than we do, of course. Anyway, he confessed, and his girlfriend, the whore, Jeanette, scrawny Jeanette, she was a wasted, tubercular little thing, something... Oh, fatherly in me. I, I arranged for her to go to a match in the Savoir as a cure and wrote to the pimp, Marcelin, to tell him what I'd done. I suppose he kept the letter as a kind of bond. Apparently, he settled on this island of Pocquerolles when he got out of jail. And that was that. Are you lighting another pipe? Hmm? Oh. It's well known as The heat on the Mediterranean coast was baking. The train pulled into the station at Yair, and we got out into what might have been North Africa. The pretty white buildings surrounded by motionless palm trees and brilliant, unmoving flowers. You almost make me envious, Inspector. Personally, I prefer Paris. You could have sunbathed. I only had my working suit with me, so I sweated like a pig. But Pike was somehow dressed in linen and a straw hat as if he was going to the plage. What incredible beauty. And so still. I usually spend my holidays in Scotland. Oh, there's the shot. The neat little man with the red hair. Local inspector. A beaver for work. The shot! Chief! Chief! Hmm? Oh, 
What a relief to hand over to you. Now, I've got a, a fishing boat to take us to the island where everyone is anxious that you should come as soon as possible, especially me. This is Inspector Pike from Scotland Yard, Lieutenant, here to learn how the French catch their villains. Oh, very odd. Is that the island out there? Yes, it is. I have to say, profoundly moving. It was. The sky was a painter's blue, and where it met the horizon, Port Corral stretched like a rainbow, bright green hills and red and yellow rocks vibrating gently in the heat haze. Our little boat seemed like a toy as it potted across towards it. Gregory, I believe you're a remote. It was just very pretty, Simnel. I didn't show you the body, Chief. It, it was brought to the mainland and will be buried tomorrow. In this heat, things tend to help quite. Marcelin was shot in the head several times and, and his face was smashed in. He's not a pleasant sight. I imagine not. The boat pulled into the island's tiny harbour, which opened out onto a vast square, gently sloping up behind it. This square was enclosed by eucalyptus trees and coloured houses and... Uh, was it mimosa, bright yellow in the sun? In one corner of this shining marble pavement was a little yellow church. I never went in, of course, but its clock measured out the empty hours. That's more than pretty. Call it seductive. There were several cafes in among the trees, but at the top there was a hotel restaurant whose terrace was broader and more sheltered than the others. This was the Arche de Noé, where it seems Marcelin and most of the local inhabitants used to drink in the evening. And there came down from it a wondrous smell of cooking and white wine. To one side of the magnificent square, on a high promontory above the houses, was a little hut where Marcelin's body had been found. It was a shame to spoil arriving on the island with this reminder of one's job. As we tied up by the town jetty beside a number of private yachts, it was so hot I couldn't think. And so I didn't remember the tall, barefoot man who took our luggage and wheeled it in a barrow up the square to the Arche de Noé. His name's Charlot. Petty criminal like almost everyone on Pokerol. He knows you too. Oh? It must have been strange to land in a paradise so full of serpents. And silent. People gathered to watch as we walked up that broad, baking space, and they said nothing. You were a celebrity, of course. Thanks to me. And thanks to my own, shall we call it, skill? Of course. By the entry to the Arche de Noé stood the owner who welcomed us and called his little waitress, Jojo, to get us wine. It's a, a lovely young lady, Chief. Very, as it were, rounded. I had noticed Le Chap, but kept it to myself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could have booked you into the Grand Hotel, but this is where Marcelin boasted that he knew you. Your wine, Monsieur Maybray. Oh, uh, thank you, Jojo. A glass for you, Mr. Pike. Not before lunch. Didn't Mr. Pike enjoy the ambiance? He certainly loved the sea. He was down to the harbour and into it in, in what the English call a trice, having borrowed some bathing trunks. Perhaps we can talk about the suspects, Chief? I think we'd better wait for Mr. Pike before we talk. He's uh, studying my methods. Uh, yeah, I've organised the town hall. It's... Mm. Oh, and here he is. Sprinting up the square like a wet wolf hound. Just a brief dip this time? Yeah, we'll sit and drink while you get dressed. Oh, I'm perfectly happy as I am. Dripping? Whose is the big black yacht with the English flag tied up by the quay in the harbour? Uh, it's called the North Star, which is, I'm told, a kind of whiskey. It's owned by Mrs. Wilcox and named after her firm. She's immensely rich and also what we call here well-preserved. She lives on board with a... Her secretary, a young man called Philip de Moricourt. How very French. Don't jump to conclusions, Mr. Pike. And there's another English person on the island. He lives in that house with the minaret. Major Bellum, or simply the Major. Drinks a lot. 
Yes, Indian Army. Oh. Well, you'll see him here tonight at the Arch. Uh, you'll see everyone here, including Mrs. Wilcox and her secretary. Were they all here when Marceline talked? They all come every night. Uh, Monsieur Emile will probably be there. He knows you too. Does everyone know me? No, but Monsieur Emile... I don't know how to quite put this in front of... No. He, he lives with his mother, old Justine, who is one of the most widely known women on the Riviera. She's the proprietor of the Fleur at Marseille, the Sirene at Nice, two or three houses at Toulon, Bézier, Avignon. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, I remember. Mm. Houses um, of relaxation. Oh, I see. But, uh, Justine is 79 years old and Emile, her son, is 65. For good heavens, that means she was only 40. They live very quietly. Don't mix much. Look, uh, see, that, that's Monsieur Emile in the garden of his house. The one set back a little by the church. He's wearing a white suit and a topi. He looks like a white mouse. <laughs> I did meet him once. Hmm. Are there any respectable people on the island? Yeah, young Jojo, they say. I, I'm, I'm just pointing out the people who were in the arch on the night Marcelin boasted the chief inspector was his friend. You don't take notes, chief inspector. I'm listening, Mr. Pike. We passed his boat on the way in. A mess like he was. People fed him and he fished a bit when he took the tourists out in the summer. When he did odd jobs, he was paid in wine. No one knew where he came from. La Havre. Really? He sounded more of a southerner. No, he wasn't. Where did you find a letter? In the boat, together with a photo of a woman. Jeanette, I've, I've explained to Mr. Pike. Well, don't you want to see it? No. The man was driving me mad in his dripping trunks. <laughs> Poor Maigret. You never liked the seaside. I tried to be the proper detective and ask questions. There's a green yacht with the little tent for a cabin tied up beside the North Star, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's owned by a man and woman who are new here. They just turned up one morning in the autumn and stayed. He's 24, a Dutch painter called de Graaf, and his girlfriend is called Anna. She's also frequently half-naked. And, oh, sorry, Mr. Pike, sometimes more than half. When night falls, you can see them both bathing at the end of the jetty without a stitch of clothing. You can vouch for that, Le Chat. Well, oh, it's hearsay. It's also said that the rich Mrs. Wilcox does the same thing round her yacht. What? I think you should get dressed before we have lunch. Eating a plateful of sparrows silenced him for a bit. I love sparrows. Your taste always was rather advanced, Monsieur Simenon. As he ate, the big, good-looking fellow with bare feet who'd helped us off the boat sidled up to our table on the terrace and introduced himself. You've forgotten me, Chief Inspector. Oh, Charlot. <laughs> oh? Uh, we've met from time to time in Paris. Mm -hmm. But not over anything serious. Oh, mm. Cocaine smuggling, immoral earnings, but never murder. That's why I didn't leave the island when they found the body. A guilty man would have fled. I take your point. It wasn't a gang job, either. Marsland always wanted to be mixed up in that, but he wasn't big enough. I have a girlfriend coming this weekend, so uh, we'll meet again. And uh, if you finish, the town hall will be free, so uh, you can start interviewing. Oh, oh good. Good. The chat rushed round collecting suspects like a sheepdog. All I wanted to do was sit and listen to the locals. But instead, we sat in the musty town hall, Pike in one corner, watching me, trying to be an inquisitor. You're too sensitive sometimes. This is Monsieur de Graaf, the young Dutch painter from the green boat, and uh, this is Anna, his, um, his mistress. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to speak to me? How long have you been living on your boat? Three years. Mm -hmm. Do you sell many pictures? No. I sold one to Mrs. Wilcox last week. Oh. Uh, Do you know her well? I met her here. She's fantastic. How? Oh. She just is. Actually, I might have met her in Montparnasse. She goes through Paris every winter and we have friends in common. She doesn't often go back to England. Why not? How should I know? 
Can I go? Uh, how old is your mistress? Eighteen. <laughs> she looked like a young savage. Blazing eyes, long hair, hot skin. Do her parents object to her being with you? They did. Uh, they've given all that up now. How long has she been with you? Two and a half years. So she was uh, 16 when she joined you. <laughs> Are you rich? I don't have a sou. Do you know why Marcelin was killed? I'm not curious. Mm. What were you doing in the Arche de Noé on the night of the murder? Anna and I were playing chess. Uh, have you anything helpful to say at all? No. And you, mademoiselle? <laughs> You've both been on Mrs. Wilcox's yacht. What do people do there? <laughs> we drink. Le Chat brought them to me in quick succession. After the Dutchman came creeping the white-suited, white-haired, white-skinned old slug Emile, the son of the antiquated Justine. <coughs> Your pipe smoke oh. makes me breathless. How well did you know Marcelin, monsieur? Uh, my mother and I have known him since Jeanette's been working for us. Jeanette? You mean, she's still on the game? She must be 45, 50. Uh, she manages the Seren in Nice. That's a high-class establishment. You probably know it. <laughs> Was it because of her that Marcelin came south? She sometimes sent him money, but... <coughs> <coughs> your pipe smoke. Is she in Nice at this moment? Oh, no, no. Hmm? She rang us from the air this morning. Huh? She's seeing to Marcelin's funeral tomorrow. She said she'd heard you were here and is crossing by the five o'clock ferry to speak to you. She'll stay the night. Uh, the pipe smoke, the mimosa. Does she often come here? A uh, window inspector. Does, does she stay with you? No. Was she in the arse when Marcelin bragged about me? Of course not. Were you? I only went for my tisane. Uh, if I could just get some fresh air. Uh, <laughs> give my love to your uh, illustrious mother. He crawled out, sucking a eucalyptus pill. This is uh, Monsieur Philippe de Moricourt from the yacht The North Star. I presume this is a mere formality. <clears throat> Your secretary to Mrs. Wilcox? Let's say I'm her guest and sometimes act as her secretary. Is she writing her memoirs? No. Well, does she still have anything to do with her whiskey firm? No. Do you write her private letters? What are you driving at exactly? I'm trying to get some idea of your work. Mrs. Wilcox is no longer young. Exactly. Where did you meet her? At the casino in Cannes. I was losing a fortune. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of poverty on Porcaron. Do you know the artist, De Graef? He's been on board several times. We bought a canvas from him. We? Oui. Yes. Had uh, Marcelin been on board the North Star? Mrs. Wilcox is a very generous woman. Oh? She adores colourful characters, and so the whole island visited the North Star. Including Monsieur Emile? He isn't colourful. Marcelin was given drinks when he visited? <laughs> Everyone is always given drinks. As they were in the Arche de Noé on the night of the murder. I'll be clear about this. Then I can go, can't I? That night, we were in the Arche drinking champagne at the Major's expense. You haven't met the Major yet, I suppose, but he is also very generous. He used to know Mrs. Wilcox in England, though they've drifted apart recently, a class thing. Anyway, the party, keeping safe from the Mistral, and Marcelin joined Mrs. Wilcox and me for drinks. Charlotte was with you too? Oh, yes. Then someone mentioned a girl, Jeanette. And after that, Marcelin said you had been kind to her <laughs> and that he was your friend. <laughs> was he? Once. Oh. Well, well, it, it grew late and people began to leave, except for Charlot, who stayed in the hotel. 
The Major left with Marcelin, and we followed a little behind. The storm seemed to frighten Marcelin, so he went up to that funny hut instead of rowing back to his boat, while Mrs. Wilcox and I braved the elements in the dinghy. You, uh, you heard the shot that killed Marcelin. The storm stopped anyone hearing anything. May I go now? Uh, did anyone play chess that night? De Greff and his girlfriend. They left before us, pretty sober. You don't normally do interviews, do you? They seem pointless. I only did them because of Mr. Pike. Outside in the square, the fishermen were playing bulls, so I went to join them and listen for other things. Five o'clock. There's the ferry boat coming with the mail, and just one woman standing in the bows. Jeanette. The little waif who made you feel fatherly. It was a profound disappointment. The woman in the bows grew clearer and clearer. She had Jeanette's features, but she, she was now fat, respectable, all silk, all makeup, and no doubt heavily scented. You too had been slim once. She had to be helped down the gangplank. And she got to the hotel rather out of breath. Jeanette! Well, I never. I thought you might want to speak to me, Chief Inspector, considering the way poor Marcelin was murdered. Oh, who's this elegant well, gentleman? An English colleague, Inspector Pike. Well, uh, I'd like to speak privately in my room, if I may. Oh. I'm quite safe these days. Uh, uh, Mr. Pike, please. I need to buy some espadrilles. She barely fitted into the narrow staircase, let alone the tiny room under the rafters by the bathroom. Oh, my feet. Let some air in through the skylight, there's a dear. Oh. A room like this must take you back, rather. <laughs> You're disappointed that I'm back at work. Mm. Thanks to you, I spent five of the happiest years of my life in that mountain sanatorium. There was a doctor, kind, like you. But when I was better, I had to work at what I knew. I'd met Justine before. Why did you come here today? I went to a year to arrange for Marcelin's funeral. Were you still in love with him? <laughs> in the mountains, I met another kind of person. The doctor helped me to understand so much. And Marcelin was different here. In Paris, he'd always wanted to be a proper crook like that Charlot, jo join a gang and commit real crimes. Here, in the heat, he was happy to become drab and drunk. And I sent him money to help him do it. I sometimes saw him on my monthly visits to old Justine to report on business, but... Why have you come here to sleep in this stuffy little room? Why don't you stay with Justine in her big house? <laughs> she never lets women stay there. Afraid? For a son? Why don't you like your pipe, like you used to? Is she? <laughs> Even at his age, he can't do anything without her permission. What else is there, Jeanette? I thought you might be wondering about Emile and his mother. Are you here to tell me that Emile and his mother are innocent? Yes. Why? Marcelin was just a hopeless tramp. Justine and Emile wouldn't have wanted him murdered. Maygrave, you always trusted me to tell the truth. Then tell it. You're not like you were, are you? You've gone professional and cold. All right, I'm here to tell you that I'm going to marry Emile when his mother dies. She has cancer and she'll be dead within a year. If she discovers our plan, she'll make it impossible by changing her will. You're in love with Emile? <laughs> Good heavens, no! He needs someone to look after him when she goes because he can't do anything for himself. I need security. He's had me medically inspected to see I'm healthy enough to care for him. And he's promised to leave me a fortune when he dies. Wasn't Marcel jealous? He thought I was right to provide for my old age. But if he began to blackmail Emile, threatening to tell his mother what you planned, that would have ruined you. Marcel would never have blackmailed anyone. Really? Well, <coughs> you have an alibi yourself. 
The mistral kept you off the island the night he died? Are you thinking of arresting me? Not yet. Then excuse me, Chief Inspector. This room is rather intimate and I have to undo my stays. Mm. These days I don't like people seeing what they hide. That was all rather rough. I marched down to the bar feeling angry. I, I wanted to lose myself where the pool players were relaxing. And drink beer with them? No. The island's white wine. At one table, Pike was playing chess with the young de Grafe. They were intent on their game, only moving to shift their pieces. Then, suddenly, like the daylight, everything was over. The bull players went home to supper, and de Grafe stood up, stared hard at Pike, and dragged his mistress to another table. You beat him? Let's go out in the dark. He wanted to win, so he's angry. You don't have young men like him in France. Wild young Frenchmen live life to the full. They don't play chess and read Nietzsche. Oh, perhaps. That young Dutchman does. He burns in revolt against everything he's ever known. The whole of bourgeois Holland, good or bad. Do you think so? Look at Anna. An intelligent young man takes a pretty but stupid girl away from home. It wasn't desire that made him do that. It was because she was a good girl who went to Mass every Sunday with her mother. You're very quick at deciding about people. People like him feel a great need to defile anything that's clean, and they are dangerous. Um, perhaps unhappy. Really? He speaks perfect English. He went to one of our public schools. Oh, oh, wow. Jeanette, then. I must tell you that Jeanette revealed, under questioning, that she's engaged to old Emile. I promise to keep quiet about it, since his mother's against it. It was after dinner that the Arche de Noé became home to those oddities who had drifted onto Porquerolles as lost lotus eaters. For example, the tipsy major. You look at the underside of a champagne cork with me, Inspector. What? Pike? We went to the same school. No. Oh. Monsieur Maigre, you've met my employer, Monsieur Emile. <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't like my pipe. Uh, may I have a word? Oh, of course. Tomorrow you go to the funeral in Nier. So? Inspector Le Chat will accompany you and make sure you come back. Oh. Where are the people from the North Star? They come out late, by moonlight. They came all right. Mrs. Wilcox was coarse, with flaming red hair. De Moricourt was neat and yet surprisingly plain. Moricourt, buy the whiskey. And none of the filthy glasses we had last time. So, you're the famous May Grey, are you? Madame? You're fatter than I expected. <laughs> it happens at a certain age, doesn't it? Pig! A glass for the fat pig, Moricourt. Oh, that woman. Don't let her ever speak to me. It's all right, Major. I may be poor, but I have my honour. Mm -hmm. As I lay in my small, stuffy room that night under the open skylight, searching for a pattern in the case, the smell of the south pressed in upon me, the salt of the sea, the heat of the square. Come in. Monsieur Maigret. Oh, Jojo. Uh, excuse me. Uh, my pyjamas are... Uh... I have to tell you something I've been keeping secret. Could you reach my dressing gown? Marcelin spoke to me two days before his death. I was polishing the bar counter when he tottered in, drunk, and told me that if he wanted, he could have a pile a metre high. A pile of what? Well, banknotes, of course. Did he say any more? Only, but what would I do with it? It's so nice doing nothing. Did he ever visit Jeanette's room when she visited? Certainly not. Or any other woman? My cousin Nina, who can't help doing it with anyone, but that's all. Well, thank you, uh, Jojo. I knew there was something Jeanette hadn't told me. If Marceline could have a pile of notes, she probably knew about that. 
and if old Justine blocked the marriage to Emile, Marcelin would always be available with that pile. And if he could get that pile whenever he wanted, then so, perhaps, could Jeanette. Especially if Marcelin was dead. Exactly. We sound just like your books, Monsieur Simenon. So, thinking all these thoughts, I fell asleep and woke up nearly too late to see the morning ferry take Jeanette to the funeral. Le Chat! Le Chat! Is she coming? Oh, good heavens, you're in pyjamas, Chief Inspector. Le Chat, don't leave her sight. Watch everything that happens. See who she speaks to. Who slips her a letter, a package. I, I thought I'd missed it. Are you getting dressed, Monsieur Maigret? In, in a minute. Have a nice funeral. And I'll see you this evening. <laughs> Goodbye. What shall we do now, Chief Inspector? Ah, Mr. Pike. Not only in espadrilles, but a stripy fisherman's jersey, too. It wasn't until lunchtime on the terrace of the Arche de Noé that I suddenly realized what I'd missed. Everyone had gathered for the ferry. Their routine never changed. Charles' girlfriend had arrived, and Pike was chattering about his friend, the Major, and how he couldn't afford polo anymore, when suddenly... Look, Emile. What's he doing, crawling across the square at lunchtime? He's collecting his mail. Hmm? The post office is down there, tucked away around the corner, and the captain of the ferry takes the letters as soon the as he arrives... The post office? <laughs> I never thought of that. That's where the shack called us from during the storm. Oh, you've come at last, Monsieur Maigret. I knew you'd want to use my phone, because the one at the Arche is very public, isn't it? You want your police headquarters in Paris? Yes, uh, uh, as a matter of fact. Sergeant Luca? I made that call back at the start, so I know the number and everything. Very exciting. There. It's ringing in the box. Oh. Thank you. I went into the box. I spoke to Luca. I came out of the box and... Interesting you want information about Monsieur Moricor and Monsieur de Graef. Uh, do you listen to all the phone calls? Oh, yes. <laughs> to make sure people aren't cut off. Can you make me out a list of all the calls of the last week? I've done it already. Because we were required to by the PTT. And, and the telegrams? Not many of those, but there's one here I sent this morning. It's to Angelo in the Rue Blanche, Paris. Sent complete information on Philippe de Moricourt, Rue Jacob. Signed Shallow. Now there's a coincidence. Indeed. And how's your English friend? Uh, swimming. This call from Marcelin to Les Sirenes. I, I wonder... To the manager, Jeanette. Uh... He said it's not about money. I could have as much as I like. She said, you've been drinking. And he said, is there a big LaRousse encyclopedia in the house? Then someone came in and I, I didn't hear the rest. Oh. But she replied by telegram, which just by chance I kept a copy of. It said, it, here, died in 1890. Marcelin read it three times and went out whistling. And what did Charlo say to his girlfriend yesterday? <laughs> He said, hello, baby. I'm staying here for a bit of fun, so come and join me. I expect he's having the fun now at the hotel. Oh, you're uh, very helpful. <laughs> I'll wait outside on the bench for my call from Paris. Monsieur Maigret. Oh, uh, I thought I'd just pop out to say your call's come oh, through. Oh, thank you. The de Morocourts fell on hard times, and Philippe failed to marry several heiresses, though he did publish two volumes of poetry. Didn't you? De Graeff was quite a painter. Could have been really good, but as he wasn't selling, he burnt all his canvases and left Paris on his boat. You didn't think to call me to... And the girl, the daughter of a shipping magnate. Such a nice voice, your sergeant. Oh, look, the ferry's coming in. It must be five o'clock. Jeanette had returned on the boat. I went up to the arch with her and 
again into the stifling room with the squeaky bed springs, and this time helped her with her stays. You lied to me about a phone call and a telegram. Turn round. Smoke your pipe. You didn't mention the LaRouche to anyone? Charlotte or Emil? <laughs> I wasn't stupid. You wanted to step into Marceline's shoes and collect a big pile of money. You're very calculating. Oh, people always say that about women when they try to provide for the future. Suppose Emile's old mother stops our marriage. I'll have to go on managing a brothel. So, if Marceline's tip was a good one... I could retire to the country and keep chickens. The truth is, poor Marcelin, he said he'd accidentally discovered an extraordinary thing. He wanted to know when a certain painter, <laughs> Vincent van Gogh, had died. The encyclopedia said 1890. He was amazed. When he rang, he'd never heard of Vincent van Gogh, let alone that he was dead. Now it's all too late and he's dead too. I, don't. I must marry that mouldy cheese after all. <laughs> Mr. Pike, the Major tells me Mrs. Wilcox has become a grandmother, but her son won't let her back to see the... Where's Charlotte? Have you got the answer? Yes. There's nothing here but selfishness. Hello! I want a word with you to help clear your name. What was that about? More than one person did this murder. And one of them I suspected was a coward. I wanted to know which one it was, because a coward finally gives in and blurts out everything he knows. The evening went on as before. Pike sat drinking champagne with Major. Charlot fondled his girl. Anna drooped over a lover who brooded over everyone. Mrs. Wilcox danced with the Moricor, her eyes brimming with alcohol. And the others were there too, Emile, Jeanette. At a certain moment, I winked at Charlot, who got up and turned off the music. Monsieur de Moricor, I don't like the way you look at me. I'm not looking at you. Oh, so you're too grand to look at me. Philippe, come away. Don't move, Lachan. Oh, you pike. What would you say if I pushed your face in? Like this. But surely. Stay still. Someone throw this hooligan out. Look, he's standing doing nothing. Tears in his eyes. We're letting him go. And have a... ...in the dawn, Mr. Pike. rode out to the North Star as soon as it was light. I demanded to see Mrs. Wilcox and climbed down to her living quarters. De Maracor and she were both in pyjamas, and there were bedclothes and empty beer bottles everywhere. Philippe, go and dress. I'll handle the inspector. Oh, don't handle me, madam. Just tell me about Mr. de Graef. He's very talented. I've bought several canvases from him for my villa in Fiesole. You've bought a lot of things. Well, there's solace in beauty, don't you think? Did you meet de Graef in Paris? No, here. And Marcelin often visited with him? My boat is open house. He talked a lot about me on the night that he died. He said you were his friend and he could prove it. When you left the Arche de Noé, was Marcelin with you? He left us at our dinghy because of the Mistral. We only just managed to reach the yacht and all night, very cosy. Did the Moricor go out again? If you were home in England, Mrs. Wilcox, I would have to remind you that anything you say could be used in evidence against you. I'm innocent. We're all innocent. Did Philippe go out again? Of course not. He was in bed if with... you've anything to ask, Inspector, I'm here. Mrs. Wilcox... What paintings do you have in your villa? I have a Renoir, a Degas, a Monet. A Van Gogh? I've just bought a very small Van Gogh. When? Three days ago. And poor drunken Marcelin saw de Graef painting it and signing Van Gogh's name. No, Philippe found it in a shop, didn't you, Philippe? Philippe, 
Say something, Philippe. Say something. I must take your secretary away, madam. To the town hall. He couldn't have done the murder. He didn't leave me all night. He's wonderful. I suppose you realize you're a little rat. A rat who's afraid all the time and will eventually tell us everything when we hand you over to my friends on the coast who are strong and heavy. You'll start to cry and then it'll all spill out. You'll tell us what excuse you made to leave Mrs. Wilcox that night. You'll tell us who first got the idea of the forged paintings. You'll tell us everything. I want a lawyer. You want a thrashing. You had one last evening and I'll be glad to give you another and another and another until your beautiful white trousers were filthy with your fear. Marshall has stumbled on one of de Graeff's paintings, signed Vincent, didn't he? Then he said, I was his friend. So you got frightened. Hmm? One of you shot him. Not only shot him, but smashed his face in to show you weren't afraid of being vicious. You prey, especially on the weak and helpless, to Morico, like a spoiled child. Murdering like a spoiled child if you can't get what you want. Above all, you're frightened of the world of adults. Here's the Dutchman, Chief Inspector. Am I under arrest? You are. And you're pleased. There'll be a splendid trial and your pictures will at last reach a prominence you've always wanted. How proud you will be of the way you fooled the world with your forgeries, except you only fooled a sex-starved, lonely old grandmother whose family don't want to speak to her. And just remember, it was a half-drunk tramp who'd never heard of Van Gogh who brought you down and will cause one of you to lose his head under the guillotine. I wish it were both of you. Rather heavy, weren't you? Selfish, spoiled young bourgeois. Marcel, I believed he was my friend, Pike. What do those two know of friendship? Monsieur Maigret, uh, look at Charlotte on the Dutchman's boat. There was Anna, in his arms. He'd seen her swallow something from the terrace. Now, he was carrying her down the gangplank, naked and dead. She could give no evidence against her lover now. You're very angry still about it all. Yes. I went back into the town hall to tell them what they'd done. It was de Maricor, lover of the poor old woman, that I hit. <laughs> there. They wouldn't do that in England, would they? And I have news for you, de Graef. Anna has killed herself. To try to save your neck. She was always stupid. We left on the midday ferry. I've never missed the island. Even though it was seductive. <laughs> Did you say something, Chief Inspector? Yes. I'm going to smoke a pipe. Simenon's My Friend Maigret was dramatized by David Cregan from the translation by Nigel Ryan of Mon Ami Maigret. Nicolas Le Prevot was Chief Inspector Maigret and Julian Barnes, Georges Simenon. Inspector Pike was played by Neil Dudgeon and Le Chat by Jonathan Keeble. Mrs. Wilcox was played by Gilly Bond and Jeanette by Maggie McCarthy. De Grave, Richard Firth. De Moricourt, Simon Donaldson and the Postmistress, Carla Simpson. Marcelin and Monsieur Emile were played by Ewan Bailey. Jojo and Anna by Emma Williams. Charlo by Martin Hyder, And The Major by Bunny Reed. The music was by Lucinda Mason Brown. The director was Ned Shire.